Welcome, my name is Keith Parsons. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about wired or wireless. What is your problem? Wired or wireless, how to quickly narrow down if you have a Wi-Fi problem. Many times Wi-Fi problems or issues, when people complain about Wi-Fi, they actually aren't Wi-Fi at all. And yet, because today, Wi-Fi is the access layer, anyone having trouble getting access to anything on the network will call, complain, and describe their problem as being a Wi-Fi problem. But what we really need to know is, is it really a Wi-Fi problem or might it be something else? So in this video, we're gonna share a little bit of information, how you might be able to help your customers see whether or not it is truly a Wi-Fi problem. Well, to get started, what we really have to do is focus and learn how a client device, a Wi-Fi device, gets on the network. Now, along the way, there's some steps, and if we can find those steps and say, oh, you accomplish this step, we can then assume all the previous steps happened as well. There is first association, probe request, probe response, client decides which AP to join, sends an authentication request, authentication response, association request, association response. That's the 802.11 part. And in that 802.11 part, the client's making all these decisions. And then depending on the SSID you have, open, PSK, or .1x, there's a, another authentication process. And in this little slide, it shows it's a separate little bubble there. Post-authentication, there may or may not be some form of encryption. None, TKIP, hopefully no TKIP, or .1x. After that is cleared, there's a port control, meaning the AP is controlling the port, won't let the client device get out the wired side of its AP. And so if the authentication is passed and encryption is passed, you can now pass traffic through the AP over onto the wired network. Now, usually what happens is there's a DHCP request and in the DHCP response, they, they get a VLAN assignment, an IP address, a subnet mask, and some DNS information. At that point, the client device can access any of the local network resources, one of which may be a captive portal. You have to first accomplish 802.11 association, authentication, encryption, get passport control, do a DHCP, get an IP address back, and then the captive portal is triggered. After the captive portal is cleared, if you have one, then you have full network access. So this is just a quick review of how a client gets onto the network. So how do we use this information to help us understand better, is it a wired or wireless problem? We turn these into a couple of questions. <clears throat> First question is, does the client have an IP address? Meaning, on the wireless NIC. In order to get an IP address on a wireless NIC, it had to finish 802.11, authentication, encryption, port control, upper layers, and have the AP transfer its DHCP request across the wired network and to get a DHCP response. And then it receives an IP address. So we know if a wireless device has a wireless IP address, how did it get it? it got it via the wireless network. So obviously the Wi-Fi is working, it's doing what it needs to do to get the information across the AP, across the wireless, over through the AP to the wired and getting that back. Now what if we get one of those uh, PIPA addresses, the automatic IP addressing addresses, the, you know, you've seen them, 167 addresses. Well, in order to get that, the client device has to make a DHCP request timeout and fail, which means wireless is working because I had to get past 802.11, past authentication, past encryption, past upper layer, and then have it fail. So even if you get in a PIP address, and sometimes on some clients, if you get one of those, you get the boing, boing, boings of Wi-Fi, but in the middle is a exclamation point, meaning they didn't get a routable IP address. But that also means Wi-Fi is working. Now, the other thing you could do, you could ask a question, you could ping the Wi-Fi client from the wired side of the network. You ping the client, if it responds, you know that it's up, not only did it have an IP address, you already knew that, but you can also talk to it over from the wired network, across the wireless, and back again. Now, my favorite, 
is to check on the client device itself what its MCS is. Modulation encoding scheme is a numbering, kind of a, a, a classifier system of all the possible things you could have on a connectivity. Modulation, coding, channel width, guard interval, those all come in, and spatial streams. Well, if you have a client that can do two spatial streams, 40 megahertz wide client and get a specific number, if it's getting that, that means that that client device, when it went to transmit, was able to transmit using that very sophisticated, fairly complicated method and was able to successfully send its signal. So we can look at the MCS index of a client and find out when it's going to transmit its next frame, is it happy with the RF? So the IP address allows us to know that it's working. The pinging the client says yes, and it's transferring data back over the wire. But MCS, it's telling us about the RF situation where that client is. So I love MCS, it's my favorite one to go to. If you have a Mac, just hold down the option key and hit the little boing, 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 and you can find out what your MCS is. I recommend using a tool called Wi-Fi Signal from Adrian Granados, does the same thing, and can even plot on your screen MCS over time. Now, if you have a Windows machine, a little tougher. Windows clients don't use MCS and up, send it up the protocol stack, but they do give you a data rate. So you can take an MCS chart, look at the data rate and kind of reverse engineer it. Now, another thing you can do, now all the first three we showed you, that means wireless is working. But if you really care about the quality of wireless, check the MCS index. Now, if you really wanna go a little step further, you can do a throughput test. There's an app that comes on iOS and Android that'll called CloudCheck, which will do like a speed test on net on the wired side, but it will also do a wireless test. Now, I'm not totally sure exactly how they do the wireless test. I've tested it hundreds of times. It's not exactly perfect, but at least gives you an idea if my wireless is faster than my wired, and that happens a lot, the wireless is happy. It's the wired internet connection that, that's having difficulty. Again, you can do the same thing with MCS. I have an MCS and it's transmitting data at 400, 500 meg, but I'm only getting 50 off of my speed test.net. Well, now I know the wireless is working. I'm sending data to the AP very quickly, but from the AP on is where it's slowing down. So compare the two, the wired side throughput versus the wireless side throughput to see where the problem might be. Now, if I have very slow, on the wireless and it matches the wired, then it's probably a wireless issue. Your wired shouldn't be your bottleneck. And if it is, then that's probably where you should be looking. Now you can always just do the old fashioned, check RSSI, ch check SNR, those work, but they don't tell me about the health of the RF at that point. I would rather use MCS. So if I have a high SNR, maybe 25 or 30, I should be getting really good MCS. If I'm not, that means we've got some congestion someplace. I'm, I'm getting a good SNR, I'm getting a good RSSI, but for whatever reason, my client's choosing not to use a higher MCS. So I could use that as a comparison. And the last one, this is more of a question. Is the problem you're looking for isolated? Is it an individual client? Is it all the wireless clients? It's the clients who are on wireless in this side of the building. So ask some penetrating questions to find out exactly where the problem is and it'll help you figure out whether or not it's wired or a wireless problem. If you have any further questions, you can contact me at wmpros.com. Stay tuned, we'll be having many more of these videos coming your way. Go to wirelesslandprofessionals.com. We have tons of videos, all the WLPC videos, blogs, podcasts. We'd like to see you join us there. Thank you.